The question of how large a dry fly to use in a dropper setup is asked a lot. The answer always comes back to the reality that you're fishing the dry fly and nymph equally, that is, actively fishing both. The first question to ask yourself is, what's hatching? Look around, what food sources are available at present? Are small mayflies daintily riding the water's surface? Or are there large stoneflies crashing back to water to lay eggs? Now you have to look at the water conditions. Is the water low and gin clear? If so, the trout are most likely to both see and feel your dry fly land. See the segment on the latter line to understand that concept. As a general rule, cast smaller flies with longer light leaders on calm water. Is the water a little higher and slightly off color? Maybe you can get away with larger dry flies because the cloak of cover of murky water conceals its impact in the trout's world. Is the water broken by riffles and hard seams, or is it glass-like and perfectly calm? The more broken the water surface, the larger flies that can be used, as broken water tends to mask the fly's impact on the surface. Those are likely the two most important factors in selecting the dry fly size and profile. And those help you answer the most likely questions you might find yourself facing. Will a size 6 foam bodied hopper land delicately on gin clear low water and not spook a fish? Not likely. Will a size 18 post wing Adams support a weighted size 6 golden stonefly nymph? Not a chance. So it's usually best not to try to pound flat water with big hoppers if you're anticipating a take on the smaller size 16 pheasant tail nymph. The fish you spook will never see it. During mayfly hatches, use a dry fly pattern matched to the insect. The most likely subsurface food is the emerging mayfly nymph. In a pale morning dun hatch, for example, a size 16 atoms can be well complemented with a size 16 beadhead pheasant tail nymph. So the size of the dry fly has to make sense. The dry fly has to support the nymph's weight so you can see it riding on the water's surface. It has to not spook fish based on the current water conditions and represent a present food source. Remember, you're trying to mimic both the present food sources of dry and subsurface while matching the water conditions without spooking the trout before your flies are presented to it.